Hi everyone, this is Scott Paradise. Uh, I'm here with the AMSSM FM Radiology Project. Today we're going to talk about feet and toe x-rays. Uh, I have no disclosures to report for this topic. Uh, so we're going to learn a systematic approach to reading MSK x-rays of the feet and toes. We're going to review three common adult findings we can see on feet and toe x-rays. Um, and then we're going to briefly discuss, sorry about that, briefly discuss common clinical uh, correlations for these x-ray findings. Um, so we start with three views of the foot that are common. Uh, first is the dorsi plantar in the bottom left. Uh, this is sort of our AP correlate. Then we're going to look at our oblique view on the bottom right and our lateral view on the top right. Um, just a note about these uh, x-rays, we're always going to try and get weight-bearing x-rays as, if possible. These help identify the foot in its functional state. It can help uh, give a sense of uh, uh, inclination as well as um, certain injury patterns. So we're always going to try and get weight-bearing films if possible. <clears throat> so starting with our dorsi plantar view, we're always going to move from uh, distal to proximal or proximal to distal. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way, as long as we do it in a repetitive way that's systematic uh, will be good. So I always start distal and move proximal. I start with the phalanges, look at each phalanx, and uh, look at the cortices, look at the joint spaces, and move um, proximally, looking at each one. Then I make my way to the metatarsals, look at the sesamoids, and finally the tarsal bones in this DP view. I <clears throat> uh, also take a look at the Liz Frank complex here. Don't want to miss that. We'll talk about that later in the talk. Uh, next on the oblique view, fairly similar. Look at the phalanges, um, then the metatarsals. Get a little bit better view of the um, tarsal bones here um, after looking at the metatarsals here. Um, I also want to make note of any extra ossicles I see throughout my views. Here I see osperonium. Um, and then I get an okay view of the calcaneus here. Alrighty. And then uh, on my lateral view, again, moving distally approximately, starting with the phalanges, moving up to the metatarsals, looking at any um, tarsal bones, um, as well as a calcaneus here, where I get a really good view um, of the Achilles insertions and plantar fascia insertions as well. I also get a sense of the foot inclination, looking for pes planus or pes cavus, and uh, can kind of see the lateral Taylor process here, although that's better seen on AP ankle films or uh, CT. All righty. Um, so now we're going to move on to three common adult conditions we see uh, or we can't see on foot uh, and toe x-rays. First is the Liz Frank injury. So this is a high energy um, uh, injury, uh, can occur when after a fall into a hyperplanar flex foot or maybe a fall from a height or a motor vehicle accident. Um, and if and this is kind of a don't miss injury because if, if this is misdiagnosed, um, it can lead to um, severe uh, secondary deformity, arthritis, uh, loss of function it can be pretty painful and life affecting. So we definitely don't want to miss it. So um, like all x-rays, I'm going to start distal. I'm going to look at each metatarsal or each uh, phalanx uh, in order. I'm going to look at the phalanges here. I'm going to look at the metatarsals. I see an incidental bipartite sesamoid right here. And I'm moving down, looking at the bases, bases. And I see some maybe lucencies here and here, which we'll make note of. Um, look at the tarsal bones and navicular here, um, and then I look at this Liz Frank complex. So first thing I see is those lucencies I pointed out. Um, <clears throat> I also see an extra little ossicle or extra little bony fragment right in there. Um, and then the final thing I notice is that Liz Frank uh, complex is a little bit widened. And if I'm not sure, I can always look at the contralateral foot as well. So these are bilateral weight bearing films of the feet. Here on the left is that same x-ray we were looking at. And we do see that this maybe looks a little bit wider than its counterpart on the right. Um, so uh, we, with the Liz Frank injuries, if we're concerned, we wanna get um, weight bearing films, of course, cause that will help that first metatarsal um, uh, tarsal metatarsal space open up um, on uh, x-ray. Uh, if we're not sure about it, we can always get bilateral films as well. Uh, CT is often used if we're, if we're not sure. Or it can help give us a better sense of small fractures that we're missing or subtle injuries. Um, and MRI um, can also see small fractures and, and confirm purely ligamentous injuries as well. As a reminder, these are uh, treated operatively uh, the majority of time. Uh, we're going to move on to fifth metatarsal base fractures, very common fracture of the foot. Um, the proximal fifth metatarsal, of course, if it's tender um, after an inversion ankle sprain, we're going to want to make sure we get 
uh, foot x-rays according to the Ottawa ankle and foot rules. Uh, but it's divided into uh, three zones, with zone one being the most common site of injury. This is a very vascular area and it heals fairly well. Um, zones two and three um, are less vascular and, and have a higher risk of non-union. So we're going to want to make sure we scrutinize this area on any x-rays. Um, so again, I'm going to start with the phalanges, look at each phal phalanx and move prop. Uh, distally to proximally. And I'm also going to, then I'm going to move on to the metatarsals here. And I see that on this base of the fifth metatarsal, I have a nice little lucency across the base right there, which I'm going to make note of. And then, uh, of course, I'm going to finish my systematic look at the foot, look at the cuboid, look at the navicular and the visualized portions of the uh, proximal ankle as well. Um, here on this oblique view, I get an excellent view of this uh, fifth metatarsal base. And I can see that the fractal line extends um, through zone one, that water or that uh, highly vascularized area. So this will likely heal well with conservative therapy. Um, if it was more distal, then we're thinking of zone two, uh, true Jones fracture or in the diaphysis as opposed to the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction. If it was in the diaphysis, then a zone three uh, fracture or stress fracture. And then again, on that lateral view, we can see that fifth metatarsal, which is a little bit lower in that lateral view, comes into uh, uh, view very nicely. <clears throat> um, of course, we're talking about adult fractures today, but uh, don't forget that in adolescents and children, uh, they have a normal apophysis here, which uh, should not be mistaken for a fracture. All righty. Uh, so if there is a, uh, any concern, you're not sure with radiographs, uh, then bone scan or MRI can help you out. Um, and again, like we said earlier, treatment is largely dependent on the fracture type, whether it's on one, two, or three, depends uh, on our um, method of treatment. And then the last thing we're going to talk about today is, is this uh, first metatarsal phalangeal joint arthritis. Um, a uh, very common cause of uh, first MTPJ pain, uh, more common in females, of course, and, and uh, as you get older um, in age. Uh, this is a blown up view of that dorsi plantar uh, view. Uh, what we see here is we see um, subchondral sclerosis, loss of joint space, and these bridging osteophytes right here. <clears throat> Again, on the lateral view, we see the same thing, osteophytosis, loss of joint space. Uh, subchondral, subchondral sclerosis. Uh, things we also want to make sure we don't miss, uh, as we can see on the left, a little periarticular erosion right here. And on the right, we see a, a fractured sesamoid here, uh, conditions we want to keep an eye out for as well. Okay. So uh, predominantly x-rays are used to diagnose arthritis here, um, but CT can uh, help us evaluate for any associated conditions or um, plan uh, our operative treatments. Um, largely, we're going to treat this conservatively with anti-inflammatories, injections, shoe wear, modifications, or orthotics, but there are a lot of surgical options. So just to, to summarize everything we talked about today, uh, we always want to get weight-bearing radiographs if possible, and, and those radiographs we're going to interpret in a systematic fashion. I like distal to proximal, proximal distal, whatever, um, whatever you like most. Um, we want to make sure we don't miss any injuries to that list frank complex. That can be a high morbidity injury if not treated um, um, early. And then uh, if we do have an inversion ankle sprain and we have that pace of fifth tenderness, and we want to make sure we get foot radiographs to scrutinize that uh, metatarsal pace. And that's uh, all I have. Thanks for your attention. And um, thanks for watching the AMSSM FM radiology project. <laughs>